Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight with you. Um, I hope you had a good Father's Day, a uh, good time with the family. I have the honor, the privilege to bring this evening the message of Miriam and her life. I hope this blesses you as much as it did me as I was studying. I could read the five or six passages where she's mentioned and be done in five minutes. But I believe that the Lord has more for us tonight. I believe that is when I studied, when I was asking the Lord to move upon me and to reveal this to me, I believe he did just that. To understand about Miriam and her life, we must go back quite a bit to find out why Miriam was even in Egypt, because that's where we pick up Miriam is in Egypt. Joseph was a person in the Bible we know well. He was uh, the one that his father gave him the coat of many colors. His brothers were jealous, threw him in the pit, sold him into slavery. The person that he was sold to was one of Pharaoh's uh, officers. He's a, he was actually the captain of the guards, Potiphar. Potiphar's wife seen David and the Bible talks about, not David, sorry, Joseph talks about Joseph being someone who was handsome, who was strong, and she tried to seduce Joseph. And when Joseph refused, the Bible says that he fleed from her, leaving his clothes behind. We know the story. She falsely accuses Joseph goes through him going to jail, him trying to get out of jail, him helping others and others forgetting about him. We find that he in interprets a dream for Pharaoh and is released from jail. He is made a leader in Egypt. He is a Hebrew leader in Egypt. We know the story, his brothers come back and he's merciful to his brothers. Bible says that he brought his family to Egypt. He found favor in the sight of Pharaoh, which is a very important point. He lived in Egypt with his family and they were blessed. The Bible says that Joseph died. Joseph and his brothers died. By this time they had already multiplied, had children, their children had children, and they had grew to a great number. The Bible says that when the Pharaoh died, a new, new king, a new Pharaoh took charge. The Bible says that he didn't know about Joseph or forgot Joseph and all the benefits that he had brought to uh, Egypt. And when he saw the number that the Hebrew, uh, uh, the Israelites were growing to, he was afraid. The Bible says that he enslaved them, and that's where it takes us to our first Scripture. Let's look together in Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. While you're turning, let me just say it's an honor and a privilege to uh, bring God's Word in teaching and preaching in any way. And I know our, our music ministers here and he will attest that whether it's in song whether it's teaching whether it's preaching anytime you're able to share God's word what an awesome time what an awesome time privilege is a heavy responsibility to know what I'm bringing tonight is from God <laughs> it's, it's a heavy responsibility to, to bring his message to his people I believe as much as I have a responsibility tonight you have a responsibility you have a responsibility to listen to God's word, to take it to heart, to let it be seed into good ground. I, I, I trust that your heart is prepared to receive what God has for us tonight. If you're there, say amen. First, uh, Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. Then a new king, who did not know about Joseph, came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become much too nu numerous for us. Come, we must deal uh, surely with them or they will become even more numerous 
And if war breaks out, will join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. So they put slave masters over them and oppressed them with forced labor. So they put them into slavery. Later we find that in Exodus 1 and 22 that Pharaoh says, gave this order to all his people. Everybody that is born, you must, everybody that, every boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile but let every girl live. Can I tell you that I believe the enemy knows when something is about to happen, when an important figure is about to show up. The Bible says that he wanted all the young men, and the, and the thought was, if I could kill the men, the women will be submissive, and we won't have a multiplying uh, a group of people anymore. Let's read further. Uh, Exodus 2, starting in verse 4. His sister, Miriam, stood at a distance to see what happened to him. This is after his mother, Moses' mother, had Moses, made a basket and put him in that basket and put him in the Nile River. Then his sister, Miriam, stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying. She felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women, one of the Hebrew women, women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered, and I love this part. The girl went and got the baby's mother. Praise God. Can I tell you, this is what I love. I love it when the enemy seeks out to destroy us. God has a way of bringing us right back to the blessings. You hear what I'm saying? God has a way of taking what the enemy meant to destroy us and turn it around for our good. Pharaoh wasn't looking to do any good, but God was. <laughs> Whoo, glory. If you're with me, say amen. All right, let's continue. The Bible says, take this baby and nurse him for me. And I love this part too. Listen to this. Not only take your own baby back, but I'm going to pay you to do it. <laughs> I'm going to pay you to do what you were going to do for free anyway. <laughs> Man, the blessings just come when we're in the mindset of serving God, when we're in the, the uh, presence of the Almighty, God not only brings us back to what the enemy was destroying, brings us back to prosperity, but he also adds to it. Mm, my Lord, somebody needs to hear that. Let that sink into your spirit, man. That what the enemy meant to destroy me, not only is God gonna bring good, but he's gonna multiply that good. Mm, my Lord, thank you, Jesus. Bible says that, so the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Now understand something here. We need to understand something. Because it, it has a, it's not a lapse, but it doesn't, it's not specific. When Moses' mother took him back into her home, he was subject to learning about the living God. How important it is that we teach our children about God. How important it is that we, we teach the truths of God, God's word. The truth of God's word will overcome a lot, and we're gonna see that in the story to come. I know this, this is not a story about Moses, but how many of you know that if it was a story about somebody that, that didn't do anything, Miriam would have never been mentioned Mm, help me, Lord. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let, let, let's get back to this. My point here, I think God's point is, is we have to teach our children about God. Had she been raised in Pharaoh's house, or had, had he been raised in Pharaoh's kingdom, in his castle, in his whatever you want to call, in his dwelling, he wouldn't have heard about a living God that came, a living God that cares, a living God that hears, and a living God that acts. Come on, somebody. Are you with me? Let's move on. I want to point out in this scripture 
who Miriam is. Miriam is seen as a clever person. She was one that was a protector, one who some say she was seven years old when Moses was born. This was a young lady who went and, and acted swiftly in a situation that could have went either way. She listened to God, and we'll see where God says that he talked to her. Miriam was very clever. So we read that Moses' mother not only raised him, but was paid to do so. All right, uh, as the story goes on, we just read where Moses was raised uh, after his mother was given to Pharaoh's daughter and she named him Moses. Can I tell you that after he got up some size, and I, I, I don't know any other way to say it, but just, just say what the story is. I'm sure everybody knows it. Please just bear with me. The Bible says that Moses slay one of the Egyptians and hid his body in the sand, buried him in the sand. And that later the next day, two Hebrews were fighting and he went to break it up. Y'all, you stop that. And he, the Hebrew said, aren't you the one that just killed the Egyptian? And because he was afraid that the word had gotten out, he fleed Egypt. This is another thing we have to take into consideration. It follows Moses as he leaves Egypt, leaves Pharaoh's uh, uh, hand. It, it, it follows that, but one thing it doesn't do is follow what happened to Miriam. Can I tell you, some say he was gone for 40 years. He was gone for some time. I know that. Can I tell you, all this time, I believe Miriam, now put yourself in her position just for a minute, in her place just for a minute. You have just put your neck out for your brother. Because you, you knew that God had something special for him. And he has done left. He, he left. And you're where? Stuck in bondage. Moses is gone, and you're still in bondage. This is going to come into play, I believe. I'm going to show you what happened in Miriam's life. But she, le- she lived in bondage. We must, that, we must not forget that. Then the Bible tells us, The Hebrew children cried out to God because of the oppression, and God heard them. God heard them. The Bible says that the king or the Pharaoh died, and we know about the burning bush, and and I get excited. I'm I'm, I'm trying to teach, I promise, but I'm not a teacher, I'm a preacher. So you have to bear with me, I'm trying to teach here, but... What did, he, what did God tell him when he said, who should I say sent me? He said, I am. I, 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 just, I know we're talking about Miriam, but I just want to hit that home. I am. God is saying, what do you need tonight? Because I am. I am enough. I'm that one that reconciles. I'm that one that heals. I'm that one that loves. When, you, when everybody else has beat you down, I'm that one that will see you through. I am. Oh, powerful. Powerful. How can you turn away when you're going for God? When Moses was sent back to set God's people free, I believe when he, when he heard the voice of God and said, say I am, I bet you something grew up inside of Moses. And he said, wow, I am. I'm, I'm going to face Pharaoh, how big and mighty his army is. But I'm bringing I am with me. How, how, how much greater is I am than Pharaoh's army? Mm, thank you, Jesus. Bible says that he goes back. And I, I'm getting to the main thing, so I, I'm skipping over a lot of the detailed pieces, but it, it is a good study if you want to study Exodus to see exactly what happened. The Bible says that he goes back and he tells Pharaoh to let his people go. The Bible says that the plagues come. The Passover came. The Bible says that We see the exodus of the Israelites when Pharaoh released them. Bible teaches us that they came to the Red Sea, their first obstacle. And I remember reading, this is not in my notes, but I remember reading where he said, were there not enough graves back in Egypt? Did you bring us here to die? How many of us feel that way at times? We feel like in my situation is so rough 
Why do I even try? God's saying, keep going forward. Keep moving forward. The Bible teaches us that Moses parted the Red Sea. They went over on dry land. Understand, I, I, I contemplated that idea. I don't know if you've ever been in a place where water dries up. If you step on that dry land, at a place where water dries up, your feet still go down. You still get muddy. But God does stuff, he does, when he does something, he does it so perfect that when they hit that ground, I believe it was solid. I believe their footing was sure. I believe they crossed on dry land. When you say dry, there's a dry that looks dry, and then there's a dry that is dry. I believe God's dry was dry. The Bible says they got across the Red Sea, and Pharaoh came after him and his army. The Bible says not one made it out. <laughs> won't, won't he do it? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Won't he do it? Won't, won't when the enemy's right on our heels, won't God just swallow them up? I believe that. And I'm not talking about a person. I'm not talking about you or me or anybody. I'm talking about the enemy. I'm talking about the devil. When the devil thinks he's got you, God will consume him and destroy him for us. I believe that. I believe that. Let's read it. The Bible says, Mary, this is in Exodus 15 and 20. If you'll turn with me. Actually, starting in verse uh, 1. I'm not going to read this. It's the song of is said uh, to be of Moses and Miriam. And this, is, this shows the next point about Miriam. Miriam was a songwriter. She was one that wrote songs. This is a beautiful song. Uh, and I'll read just a couple verses. Verse one, I will sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. It goes on, and, and how beautiful it is. And, and take the time to read this. Chapter 15 is a, a beautiful chapter. I want to highlight a couple verses after the song. The Bible says in chapter 15, verse 19, when Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the water of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam, the prophetess, and there you go. The next thing we see about Miriam, she's a prophetess. She prophesied, she heard from God. Aaron's sister took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women followed her with tambourines and dancing. Miriam sang to them. If you'll look with me, the song, this is what she sang. Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. I tell you, God shows Miriam there as a leader. I, I've never found anybody, never seen one person who is led by force. If you're led by force, you're not led, you're drug. <laughs> you hear me? A leader is an example and is followed. You, you hear what I'm saying? A leader is an example and he's followed or she's followed. The Bible says that the women followed her. What an example she was to those women. So Miriam was one who sang, who played music and who danced. The Bible teaches us that Miriam was not perfect. None of us are perfect. We always try to think of the Bible as perfect people, but I believe God used people in the Bible just like he uses people today. You say, why you say that, brother? I don't believe that. Let me give you one example, one good example. David, mighty man of God, strong, powerful. He, he was a man after God's own heart. I, I, don't, I don't believe he did anything wrong. He was anointed to be king at a young age. He didn't get, get boastful. He went right back to the sheep, the sheepfold and started tending to the sheep. In all accounts, David was a mighty man of God. David, when he became king, suffered from a wandering eye. And he took a man's wife to his own. This is the same guy that slayed 
the giant. Same guy who walked through the town and the women touted, Saul has killed his thousand, but David his ten thousands. Mighty man of God who fell. So I believe that illustrates the point that we, because when I was studying this message, I'm going to be honest with you, I looked at Miriam and said, man, that really put a hit against her, what I'm about to read to you. But Miriam was used by God for a very specific, a very unique reason, and we're going to see that. Let's read it together. The Bible says in Numbers, we're going to Numbers. I'm going to bring up once again the, uh, the point I made earlier about Miriam. We're going to read it first. 12, 1 and 2. Miriam and Aaron began to talk against Moses because of his Cushite wife, for he had married a Cushite. This is what she said. Has the Lord spoken only to Moses, they asked? Has it he also spoken through us? And the Lord heard this. Give me just a minute right here to, to say this. I believe that we all respond to situations sometimes that have nothing to do with that situation. Hear what I'm saying. If a wife lashes out at a husband, it could have been something happened three hours ago that he's hearing about right now and thinking it's about something he did. Same thing with a wife. A husband could be facing something at work, come home and lash out at a wife, not because it's something about that situation, but something that has happened in the past. We're all guilty, all guilty of that. And I think Miriam, and, and, and this does not say it in the Word, but I believe if you meditate on the Word and you start putting yourself in these, these situations in your mind and start asking God how it would have felt to be back in that day, you'll start to see. I believe that Miriam, because of what happened in the past, may have been like that prodigal son when he came back and his brother said, I've been here all along. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I've been here all along. I haven't left. He took his inheritance, and now you're, you're bringing him back into the fold. Miriam was saying, I'm, I was with the people the whole time. And he comes back after this many years. She didn't say this. Understand what I'm saying. This, this is one possibility that could happen to any of us. That bitterness could set in. The Bible says that God heard this and that God was not pleased. He called him out of the ten of the meeting of meetings. And when he talked to uh, Aaron and Miriam, this is what he said. He said, At once the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and uh, Miriam, Come out of the tent of meeting, all three of you. So the three of them came out. Then the Lord came in a pillar of cloud. He stood at the entrance to the tent and, and summoned Aaron and Miriam. When both of them stepped forward, he said, Listen to my words. When a prophet of the Lord is among you, I reveal myself to, you, to him in visions. I speak to him in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? I want to make it clear God was offended that Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses. The Bible makes that clear in, in the way he spoke to Aaron and Miriam. The Bible says in verse 9 of that same chapter, the anger of the Lord burned against them, and he left them. When the cloud lifted from above the tent, there stood Miriam, leprous like snow. Aaron, I want you to, I want you to take note of this. Aaron didn't get struck and struck him with leprosy. It was just Miriam. Which leads, leads us to believe again that Miriam had a lot of influence over people. 
I believe it doesn't say this now. It says both of them were speaking together about Moses. But I believe Miriam was a strong-willed individual. I believe the reason that she was stricken with leprosy was because she likely was the one who started this conversation, in my opinion. The Bible says that she was stricken with leprosy. <laughs> I have two brothers, and I have three sisters, and I'm not a mean person. But I can tell you right now what I'd do. <laughs> if something like that happened after my, my sister and brother did that, I'd say, good for you. That's what you deserve. You shouldn't have been talking about me. You got exactly what you deserved. I, I know none of, none of this congregation would do anything like that, but I have two brothers and a couple sisters, three sisters. But we see that Abraham and Aaron did not do that. The Bible says that they cried out to God on behalf of Miriam. They love Miriam. The Bible says that Moses, in, in verse 13, cried out to the Lord, Oh God, please heal her. The Lord replied to Moses, If her father had spit in her face, would she not have been in disgrace for seven days? Confine her outside of the camp for seven days. After that, she can be brought back. So Miriam was confined outside the camp for seven days and the people did not move, did not move on until she was brought back. I wanna say something right here. I wanna stop here just for a second. The Bible talked about seven days in this scripture. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's, that's a significant point in this message. That's a significant area we need to address. Seven is seen as the number of completion. Seven is seen as the number of finished, the end. This is finished, seven. This is also seen as perfection. The Bible says that uh, God created the heavens and the earth in seven days. Created in six, on the seventh he rested. The Bible says that seven is important. I see that come up a lot. In Revelations it comes up all the time, talking about seven and being complete. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. On the seventh day, she was healed, the Bible tells us. On the seventh day, she was brought back into the fold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven days. The Bible says seven days she was brought back to the fold. I want to give you a connection from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Sorry, I thought I had that on vibrate. The Bible says that seven days she was brought back into the fold. Seven. And I believe that if we go all the way back to uh, Adam when he sinned for the first time, it looks a whole lot like what happened to Miriam. He made a mistake. He went against God. That's basically what Miriam did. She went against God when she spoke against God's servant Moses. What happened to Adam when he went against what God told him? He was put outside of the garden. No much, it's not much different than what happened to Miriam. Miriam was separated from her group. The Bible, I believe, teaches that when somebody has leprosy, somebody goes before them and says, unclean, unclean. She was separated from her group. Just like Abraham, uh, uh, Adam was separated from his relationship with God. One, two, three, four, five, six. Teaches in the Bible where all the things that happened, animals had to be a sacrifice for the covering of sin. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the point right here. This is where we want to be. When God 
does something. He does it complete. Do you believe that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Jesus came to die for our sins. Seven, complete. Now we are uh, welcomed back into the fold, back into the uh, uh, right relationship with God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Connections between Miriam and what she did and how she was separated looks an awful lot like the redemption story of Jesus Christ. How we're the salvation, how we're saved. God was merciful to Miriam and he is merciful to us. God is merciful to us. And you say, well, I, I've been pretty bad. I've done this, I've done that. Can I tell you, because God does a complete work, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, God will forgive you no matter what. And God will set you back right. Where you was unclean, God said he's gonna cleanse you. And, th and this is what God does, and I love this. I, I, I absolutely love this. God does not sacrifice again. Hmm, my Lord. He sacrificed that animal that time, and that sin was covered. You know they had to sacrifice another animal the next year, and the next year, and the next year, and the next sin had to be covered. This sin wasn't covered. I'm glad that my God does it complete. <laughs> he done it one time, he done it with Jesus, and he don't have to do it again. Can I tell you, my God does things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, completely. God does not do things halfway, he goes all the way. I don't have to go back. I don't have to go back and say, God, I, I, I made a mistake. I need your son to die again. <laughs> he said one time was enough and it covered it all. Oh, sweet Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can I tell you, my God is faithful. My God is faithful. I believe Miriam's story is not by accident. And I said it earlier and I'm going I'm to repeat it now. I believe that we all have a purpose in this life. Every one of us. How many of you like tomato sandwiches? Come on now, we're in the South, come on. Okay. You'll understand this, you'll appreciate this. My father-in-law plants tomato plants. I'm not a farmer, so if I mess this up, please just bear with me. <laughs> I can eat it, but I can't plant it. <laughs> I can plant it, but I ain't gonna grow it. <laughs> the, but the truth is, is he'll plant a tomato plant, put the seed in the ground. How foolish would it be if he goes out and digs that ground and preps it for so long, I've watched him do it before. He'll prep and prep and prep that ground. When it's finally right and it's, he's got it in rows, he'll come back and he'll dig a little hole and drop the seed in and cover it up. How foolish would it be for me to stand there and watch him plant all those plants and then go in the house, get me a table, set it up at the end of the row, get me some bread and start putting some mayonnaise and salt and pepper on it, and go to try to start picking that tomato. That would be foolish. That would be foolish. God has a timing, and we have to get in that timing. We can't get before God, or we'll, re we'll rip up that seed that one day will produce beautiful fruit that will feed people, that will nourish people. But if we get ahead of God, and we dig up that seed, it'll be no good for us. How many of you in your families have planted seed and been frustrated? It's been two months. I've been inviting him. I've been inviting her. It's been a year. I've been t telling that person to get off drugs. I've been telling them they needed help. It's been a year. I told that person he needed to stop running around with his wife or she needed to stop running around with her husband. I, I, I just, I can't wait. I got to dig that seed up. God said, leave it. God said, in due season, mm, my Lord, in due season, you'll reap. In due season, you'll reap. No, it, it makes no more sense for me to stand there and, and make that bread prep for that tomato. Make, it makes no more sense for me to rip out the seed that God has had me to plant. Miriam planted seed. Whether you want to see it that way or not, let me just say it this way. Miriam invested in Moses. Miriam lived years without seeing that investment come to term, without seeing that investment produce fruit. We, we as a church, listen, God is, I believe God has spoken this to me for this time, for this hour, for this congregation. I believe we need to be patient 
with people. We need to be, oh, I'm going to take it a step further. Thank you, Lord. We need to be patient with our family. Because it's easy to be patient with the people I, I feel can leave me. Because you, you, know, you know this is true. A lot of times the people who hurt the most are the people that's closest to us. That's the people we hurt the most. I don't feel like my wife's going to leave me. So I may not be as refined as I am with you. Being honest, I have nothing to hide. I, I, I may not be as together with her as I am with you. I take it for granted she's going to be there. She's been there for 19 years. She's the mother of three of my children. My only three children, that didn't sound right. Let me back up. I only have three children. <laughs> she is the mother of my children. <laughs> she has been there through thick and thin. And it's easy for me to take her for granted. And you can say the same if you're honest. We, I, I believe it, uh, uh, we need to go to our homes and show compassion to that one that's wayward, the one that is not doing right, the one that everybody has counted out, that's the one that God uses. The one that you say, there's no way that person's getting straight, God's going to use that person. God's going to say, I'll take that life and I'll change that life and I'll use that life for my glory. Can I tell you, oh, thank you, Jesus. God loves each and every one. He has a plan for each and every one. I believe if we'll allow that seed to stay in the ground, it will produce fruit. Moses is one of the most well-known people in the Bible. Miriam was a behind the scenes kind of person. Even though she did some, some pretty outstanding things, for the most part, she was behind the scenes. And I tell you, I believe her reward is just as good as Moses' was. Now, I, I'm gonna say, Jer Jeremy, my cousin, love Jeremy. Jeremy would give you the shirt off his back, I guarantee you. He's not standing up front. He, he, he a lot of times is not seen, but I guarantee you, that man is making a difference. He's making it in my life. And he's not boastful. He's not heard of. You don't hear his name announced over a loudspeaker somewhere, but he's making a difference in the kingdom. I believe that. I believe that. Miriam's reward is not broken down because her name wasn't huge in the Bible. I believe God sees everything. I don't believe any of our efforts are lost. I believe God sees it all. I would tell you now, if you're wondering, what good am I doing? We all feel that way at times. Keep doing it. If you're walking on a path toward God, keep doing it. Because I can tell you in due season, in due season, oh, hallelujah. I'm going I'm I'm to pick that tomato. I'm gonna, and that's the way I eat it. I'm going to peel that skin off. I'm going to slice that bad boy up, and I'm going to eat me a sandwich. Can I tell you, because I waited, I was patient, I didn't pick it early, I didn't dig that seed up, but I waited. If you will wait on the Lord, mm, oh, sweet Jesus, if you'll wait on me, can I tell you, I'm going to show you one more piece, and then we'll close about Miriam. Can I tell you, Miriam made a huge difference for the kingdom. If you'll turn with me to, let's get down to where we need to be. Numbers 20 and 1. I can tell you I love the Lord. The Lord has been merciful to me. He has been gracious and he has been patient. More than I've been with him and others. But I can tell you we're all growing. If we'll stay in his presence, if we'll stay connected with him, he'll take us where we need to be. The Bible says in Numbers 20 and 1, the first month the whole Israelite community arrived at the desert of Zin and they stayed at Kadesh. There Miriam died and was buried. The Bible tells me that 
she died and was buried. The Bible says that the people were complaining of thirst. They were thirsty. I've never seen this quite this way as I, I studied for this message, for this teaching. I've never seen it quite this way. The Bible says in verse 9, Moses took the staff, this is after he prayed and got direction, from the presence, from the Lord's present, presence, just as he commanded him. He and, Aaron, he and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, Listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses raised his arm, struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out, and the community and the livestock drank. Why is this important? If we're not careful, we will read right over this and not see the significance. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, I may not be like everybody, but I, I am, I believe, called by God. I believe God gives me these understandings, gives me these illustrations, and I don't believe they're wasted. I believe that this is what he's telling us in this passage, passage of Scripture. Miriam was loved. Miriam was missed. Can I tell you, Miriam, as much as she did, must have made an impact. Because out of all those hundreds of thousands, or a couple million in that number, Miriam's name came out. She made a difference. Can I tell you, you can't make a difference in this world and not be missed. And I believe because she died, that group started complaining and wanted water. I'm not saying this was the first time it happened, but just, just stick with me here. Just for a minute, I'm, I'm going to close. The Bible says that he struck that rock twice and water came out. This is what I see in this story. This is how I see it. When something is taken from our lives, God will replace it with what we need. When we lose something, and none, none of us are immune to loss, whether it be earthly goods, whether it be a loved one, a spouse, a child, whether it be whatever, God will replace that void. They needed water. And, I, and the way I see it, they needed Miriam. God said, I will give you water to sustain you. I, I believe this. This is my own personal story, and I'm closing. I grew up in, in Durham and... and didn't always live like I should have. Um, married at a very young age. I was 17. My wife was 16. Was a father at 18 and she was 17. Uh, my mom's here and I can tell you now she raised me in the scriptures. Uh, she had me at church. She, she uh, would bring me to church and my papa was the pastor of that church. And I had people praying over me. I remember going to my papa's and have him, having him pray for me right out of his bed. He was in his pajamas, and my mama said, we need prayer. He jumped out and started praying for me. Can I tell you, I went my own way and did my own thing, even though my mom taught me the right way, even though I had the instruction. Can I tell you, it, it took a little while for me to find that person who was my Miriam. Listen, hear me out. His name was Pastor Don Watford. He meant so much to me. He was a mentor to me. He loved me. He cared for me. I would call him in the middle of the night and say, I I'm struggling with this. And he'd say, this is what you need to do. You need to pray. He would encourage me in the Lord. I lost Pastor Don a few years back. It hurts deeply. <laughs> Just give me a minute. It hurts deeply. Even now, it hurts. Can I tell you, I, for the last couple of years, I have been looking and searching for God to fill that void. Can I tell you, God led me to this church. Both figuratively and literally gave me another pastor. Oh, listen, help me, Lord. I shouldn't talk about Pastor Don. I should start writing this on Facebook, I guess. 
I know what the people who lost Miriam are going through because I feel the same thing. Can I tell you, God will give us what we need when we need it. When I felt alone in the desert, God led me to this church and the people love me, people love me, people love me. When I couldn't find a home where I felt comfortable because Pastor Don wasn't there, this place was the place I needed. And can I tell you, I know it's, 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 it's not just because his name is Don. His name could be anything. What he stands for, who he knows, and when I say who he knows, I'm saying God. He's in touch with the Heavenly Father. I believe our pastor at this church is a godly man, full of the Holy Spirit. I believe he's leading us in the right direction. And that's, what I, that's the void that I was missing. And can I tell you, God put me with another Pastor Don, and God will give you what you need if you'll trust him. If you'll trust him. So to recap this message, Miriam was a faithful woman of God. Even at a young age, she sought to do the right thing and to not just give to herself, but to give to others. She followed her brother when he was in the basket in the river. The Bible says that she was a quick thinker because she told Pharaoh's daughter, I have a Hebrew woman I can go fetch. She was an able leader. She was a songwriter. She was a prophetess. The Bible says she was jealous of Moses, or it led us to believe that. But all in all, I believe Miriam teaches us that we can make a difference, that we should keep fighting, that we should keep that seed in the ground because in due season it's going to produce fruit. I believe Miriam is telling us in the, in the accounts of Miriam, God will fill the void that you have for your loss, from your loss. I believe if you'll meditate on that, meditate on what Exodus is telling us and what happened in Numbers, I believe you'll see that God is faithful. I believe that he does a complete work. And I'll end in this with this. I believe because he finished. Jesus was on the cross. He said it's finished. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Complete. Done. Finished. I believe because it's finished, I don't have anything to worry about. My sin is no longer covered. My sin is washed away. Praise God. Come on, brother.